Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chai Chi Tai Chi web show. I'm Dane Dormio. I'm here as usual with my good buddy, the martial philosopher Andrew Brown, and we are joined tonight by an exciting guest, Lynn Nicole of Qigong Infused Yoga. The name of that pretty much says it all <laughs> if you uh, if you are into this sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to diving into it and finding out what what you're all about, what Qigong Infused Yoga is all about, because it sounds like a delicious combination. So uh, Lynn, thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here and nice to meet you both. And uh, I always love talking about Qigong and yoga. They're just such incredibly healing practices, you know, independent of each other and fused together. So thanks for having me. Awesome. You're welcome. Yeah, that that does sound sound very similar to to my own view on on Qigong and yoga. I, I consider these to be allies in terms of reaching the world and helping people. There are certain benefits that people are looking for from whether from mind body practices, whether it's exercise, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, things like this. People are looking for stress reduction, uh, health and wellness and healing, um, uh, releasing tension uh, and aches and pains from the body, um, improving energy and focus in emotional state, on the other end of the spectrum, performance enhancement, all these sorts of things. And so, so Qigong and yoga, in my view, are allies in 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 doing this work and 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 getting this out to the world and and just to uh just to put this out there the way that i i i sort of frame the 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 two myself is is it completely different but sort of convergent evolution uh in terms of the these ancient traditions um and uh, and yoga comes from from a very ancient knowledgeable tradition uh, of of Vedanta on the one hand that and is has its roots in spiritual practice and Qigong comes from a very ancient tradition of Taoism and traditional Chinese medicine and is is has its roots in a healing practice but in many ways they sort of converge and, and end up and overlap and, and end up in the same place in a lot of ways so. Um, uh, I, that's, that's, uh, my, uh, my interpretation of it. And, and so I'd, uh, really love to hear what your take on it is and, and how, how these blend synergistically. So it's not a one or the other, but that they, they, they go together and, and, and support each other. Yeah. You know, I love that you were, um, use the word ally. I often use that very same word. So I was really resonating with, with that Qigong and yoga being allies, you know, it's like, here's here. Whoop, whoop, there we are. Here's Qigong and there's yoga. And then they come together and ultimately connect to bring us towards the same um, essence. And really ultimately I think both practices provide us with the same benefits. Um, I found doing because I practice both independently on my own and I fuse them together. So um, I feel like, you know, it's, they're, they're very different, but ultimately, like what you're referring to, it brings us back to that same essence of where we're um, ultimately. I love when my teacher, Roger Yanka, talks about this. We're coming to that space of awareness without content within our being and through that, like everything re is able to relax our physical body, hopefully our mental body and our emotional body. Um, and I feel like Qigong and yoga, whether they're practiced independent of each other or when fused together, like lead us to that same, that same um, essence. And like with all of that, you get exactly what you were talking about, the increased energy, your joints become more supple. Um, you're stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system in your body, inducing the relaxation response in the body where the, where the healing is facilitated and catalyzed in the body. 
And ultimately, both with, you know, with both practices, Qigong, we're increasing Qi, we're circulating Qi, we're circulating life energy through the body. And in yoga, we're building, conserving, and circulating prana. And Qi and prana are synonymous, right? Many of us know this, and those that are new to the practices may not. But Qi and prana are ultimately synonymous. It's life force, life energy. And both practices build that life energy in our body through the breath, through the movement. And it's a really powerful way of, um, you know, improving health in, in really deep, huge ways. So more to be said, but that, that's it for now. <laughs> I, I love that you mentioned the breath and the, and the movement because uh, – because the qigong is is can be looked at as through the lens of the three regulations body breath and mind mm -hmm. uh, woven together and, and and i know andrew had some questions about the 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 breathing aspect of things as well that's um that's that's something that's that's a really powerful aspect of, of mind body practices yeah and we can even you know if you're open to it later we can do some um, breath work together if you yes. do that <laughs> Definitely. Let's, uh, let's go who are with watching, that. join us so that they're actually getting the benefit here, you know, and, and doing it with us. So I love that part of it. So great idea. I, yeah, I think it's a great idea too. <laughs> so Lynn, uh, I was asking you a little bit earlier. So you've been practicing qigong and um, yoga for how many years again? About seventeen years. All right. And uh, is there styles of Qigong and yoga that you focused on or have you been doing multiple different styles to really kind of get essences down? Yeah, with Qigong, multiple different different styles from different teachers and yoga. My first yoga teacher was a Krupalu yoga teacher. So even though I got trained in more Hatha yoga, mm. she, I think, informed my style. And it's a very gentle yoga practice, which naturally feeds well with qigong because it's incredibly gentle and cr incredibly healing um so yeah all right cool cool uh yeah so uh dane just mentioned that i was going to be asking about some breathing techniques and some uh, practices so when you've practiced these yoga and the qigong techniques what kind of breathing uh have you found is like the your your favorite style your favorite kinds of breathing. Wow. That's a, yeah. That, I mean, I think really all of them, to be honest, we do at the beginning of the practice, we'll do some slower pranayama, like three part yogic breath, which maybe we can do a little bit later together. Um, and that um, is good for inducing the relaxation response and stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. And through doing like a longer breath out, me and my teacher, I just went out to Santa Barbara, California to, to meet him. He lives out there. And we were talking about pranayama and we were talking about like, why is pranayama so beneficial? And he would often say that when you um, allow your exhalation to be longer than your breath in, that's what induces the relaxation response. But even more so, when we do a deep breath in, like with three part yogic breath, we breathe in to the belly, we breathe in to the rib cage, we breathe in to the chest. And then when you hold your breath for about four or five seconds, um, within the lungs, we actually have stretch receptors which expand and baroreceptors, which contract. And through that expansion and contraction of the stretch receptors and the baroreceptors, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine is released in the body. And that's the neurotransmitter that relaxes us, which is like so amazing that we can just use the breath to change our physiological state from fight and flight to rest and digest. So I love the slower pranayama and three-part yogic breath. Just breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. You could hold if you want, you know, that um, substance to be released even more. And then that long breath out from yoga is very similar to shi shi hu breath. Xi, xi means inhale, inhale in Chinese and hu means exhale. It's almost the same exact thing. You're just breathing in, breathing in. You could hold the breath or not. Slow breath out, H-U, long and extended. Mm, mm. So, 
So that's where, um, you know, Dane was saying like they're allies, you know, three part yoga breath is almost the same as she, she, who breath. And ultimately they're both going to facilitate the healing response in the body. So I love the slower pranayama. And I also love the, the active breath work. Um, so breath of joy, which you may have seen is, you know, more faster. It's like, <sighs> and that's more for building and circulating chi in the body. And it's really good for depression too. You know, right. if you're feeling yeah. or lethargic, um, and there's a lot of other um, faster breathing patterns that are really energizing for the body. So I, I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. All right. Okay. So I'm something I'm curious about is, uh, is, uh, we're, we're talking about the similarities between and, and the, the parallels between yoga and Qigong. But as what are, what are the distinctions? As in it's, you know, it's, it's, it wouldn't be accurate to say, oh, it's, it's all just the same thing. It's, you know, it's just all one thing. There, there, are, there are distinctions and, and there are, um, you know, there's, there are, uh, I, I think there are, there are distinct benefits. Like there are certain things mm-hmm that you that you would distinctly certain benefits that uh come distinctly from from practicing qigong and others that come distinctly from practicing yoga so what are what uh kind of defines the boundary and what what are some of the distinguishing characteristics in terms of um in terms of benefits and and uh it's 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 okay to be honest uh <laughs> Uh, it's, it's okay to be honest about it. It's, we, we want to hear what you really think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I have a deep love for Qigong. So I, I also have a, a love for yoga, but there's like something in my heart that connects me with Qigong in a little bit of a different way than the practice of yoga. I mean, yoga, which I teach regularly, you know, and I always integrate Qigong, um, is really good for muscles and releasing tension in muscles and lower back pain and shoulder pain and neck pain and a lot of the stretching and the breath work and the, you know that combination within yoga is just incredibly good for surrendering tension in the muscles as a lot of us know who do yoga. Um, Qigong you know, and I'm sure a lot of your guests know Qigong means to work with or to cultivate energy. There's something a little bit different about the quality of Qigong in the sense of, um, oh gosh, like the place of, um, place of inner peace that you're able to access through the practice of Qigong is like just a treasure. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, well, it's just golden, you know, and I also find when I'm teaching just a Qigong class, um, some we'll do it in a circle and we'll, you know, we'll exchange energy and transmit at the end of class together. And it feels deeper in a way. And it brings, at least in the classes that I'm doing, it just feels like it just, it brings us together energetically in a really powerful way through that, um, through the energy work. And it's, Qigong is just, it's so deeply relaxing, as you guys know. Um, So, I mean, you know, obviously the experts and the scholars would go very deep into like what you were talking about, Taoism and, and, you know, from China and when it was uh, created and all the different styles and even the different various styles of Tai Chi, Yang style, Chen style, there could be like a, a book written about the distinct nature of the practice, but I guess I'm just speaking from my heart. You know, I have a real love for. for yeah, I love that. that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I've 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 found it's kind of like cat people and dog people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to when uh when when and and for me, like you know, like it, dogs are great. I love them, but but I'm a cat person. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and and uh, and and that's that's kind of how I feel about yoga and and qigong is is yoga yoga is great I love it but I'm a 
I'm a, I'm a Qigong Tai Chi person. And um, it's, it's kind of a similar parallel with Buddhism and Taoism. It's a very similar, if not the same philosophy and different clothing, different modes of expression um, that, that are kind of largely a matter of, you know, personal preference and, and, mm -hmm. and, and what, what, what calls to your heart. Um, and, and, uh, the martial arts, um, the martial art aspect of, of Qigong is also, mm -hmm. uh, a big, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a big distinction. Um, there's mm -hmm. that, 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 that connection with, with Tai Chi and the internal martial arts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, uh, so yeah, I feel you about, uh, yoga and Qigong are, are, are both great. And I, and I recommend either and or both according to what a person feels called to do. But, uh, but I definitely resonate with Qigong having a special place in yeah. my heart. Yeah. You know, at one point my, my teacher actually said, um, you know, like, do you want to choose a discipline? And I said, no, I want to go deeply into both of them. And, and then we ended up ironically enough teaching a, like a chi infused yoga week long workshop at Kripalu. And then when I was um, deciding to sort of come up with a name for what I'm doing, Qigong Infused Yoga, and deciding on my website, qigonginfusedyoga.com, it's interesting. The domain name was taken. I'm like, who in the world has this domain name? And guess who it was? It was my teacher, Roger Yanka. And so anyway, we ended up working out where he exchanged the domain name back to me and or to, to me. You know, he, he actually came up with the name like on his own. And then I came up with the name. And it's just funny how that worked out. Um, but I, I like the combination because you sort of get like <laughs> it, it, the practice of qigong infused yoga it integrates the slow moving pranayama and then it goes into some really slow warm-ups with from both yoga and um and qigong and then we'll do something like heart salutations but i love the qigong uh aspect of the practice we'll do tapping every class we'll do tapping have you done a lot of tapping mm -hmm. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah yeah Mm -hmm. tapping and i love um shaking like a tree have you done a lot of shaking like a tree from qigong uh, and that one's so yeah. powerful as you know for lowering cortisol levels and just what you feel in your body is is just so visceral from doing shaking like a tree so and i mean you probably know that that's what animals do in the wild to release trauma and stress it's like you know i'm always like so, yeah. Yeah, it's so accessible yeah. and you can walk around your house you know, just tap away, you know, and just take a mini break. Like those of you out there watching, you know, if you have a stressful job at work, I have a student who goes into the supply closet <laughs> and she just does uh, shaking like a tree on her, you know, as mini breaks and it's so accessible. And then even in the car, you know, it's sort of, instead of just thinking about the practice of Qigong or the practice of yoga being an hour on the mat, maybe I'm still driving because maybe the practice can be while we're driving or while we're doing the dishes or while we're taking the shower and, you know, <laughs> shampooing the hair. You can do she, she, who breath when you're in, uh, when people have road rage and you're in a road jam, breathe in, breathe in, long breath out. And mm -hmm. it's, it's thinking, I like thinking of these practices as a lifestyle, you know, whenever we think of it, shake like a tree, whenever we're start feeling fatigued, tap away, walk around your house and tap, you know, and just make it a part of your life. As often as we're doing deep breathing, we're also embracing the practice too. So yeah, I'm really passionate Good. about that aspect. Very clever, Lynn. Yes, I've told my students as well to do everything as if they're doing Qigong. So you should be breathing with every movement and you should be focusing on the moment constantly. Right. So very, very cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys both like shaking like a tree and tapping? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm and really it's, a tapping. Uh, it's one of the things I do in pretty much every one of my health qigong focus classes is self-tapping starting from the spine going all the way up around the center line and then down the legs and down the arms yeah 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 oh great 
yeah, it's part of it's part of a process that we teach called the daily dose. It's um, uh, it's it's actually uh, we uh, we we have a a group for it and uh, an online learning community for it um, that as, as as something that we teach. But speaking of uh, speaking of teaching, so you uh, you do teacher training and workshops and private training, all of these things. What um, what do you uh, what is your work in terms of teaching and and training? This is something that. Uh, you can, you actually certify people uh, uh, in Qigong infused yoga as instructors, yeah. right? Yeah, that, yeah. I started that about a year ago. So I'm doing Qigong infused yoga online teacher training programs every oh, January wow. and um, every September. So the next one starts on January 5th. So it's it's 10 weeks on Sunday nights from 6 to 8. And it works out. Some people think, well, how does it work doing it online? But the whole body fits in the screen and we, we work it out. And it's, um, it's been going really well so far. So it's for 10 weeks, like I said, Sunday, 6 to 8. And then at the end of the 10 weeks, you get certified in Qigong infused yoga. And, and also people who, you know, have yoga experience, um, tend to come to it, you know, because then they want to integrate Qigong into their classes. But it's definitely open for people who just want to deepen their personal practice and learn more about Qigong as well. Um, and then I have a DVD. So that kind of, you know, comes with the, the teacher training program and it's used as a tool for, for learning the practice and the flow. So and then my retreats are in, in Massachusetts. So if we have any Massachusetts viewers, they can just contact me <laughs> and uh, reach out about those. But um, Or if you're interested in traveling to, to the no doubt beautiful state of Massachusetts. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the online ones are a little more accessible for everybody. And what's great is I'm getting people from around the world. I have someone from New Zealand interested and Last time we had, you know, in Canada, and so it's just nice. I mean, my passion is just like I'm sure you guys is just to spread it as much as possible because the the benefits are real and they're powerful. And I know for me, it's just it's helped me to to change my life in such a deep way. Like my nervous system is healed mm. a lot from, from these practices. So. I'm very connected to it um, for the, for that. You know, we live in a chaotic world, right? It's just, it's crazy out there. And so many people are suffering and struggling. I feel like both practices and independently and when fused together, it's, they're so, it's so powerful for healing the heart, healing our emotions, healing our body. And we need it. We need it in this culture. Absolutely. It's a necessity, not a luxury. It's something that, it's it's something that that all of us need and and many of us are are depriving ourselves of is is a daily mind body practice of some kind and so you're uh uh yeah you're you're totally right we we share this vision of 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 bringing this awareness in these practices to more people and and especially the people who haven't already heard of these things um the people who are uh, the, the people who, uh, who, who need these things the most. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and so we honor and celebrate the work that you're doing to, to, to make this accessible and, and, uh, and, and, and shine the, shine the light into the, into the darkest corners. Yeah. Yeah. That's well put, well said for sure. Yeah, Lynn. Thanks. Yeah, it's definitely uh, spreading it, like you said, is very important. Uh, every single person I share with Qigong and Tai Chi with, they're just, a lot of them just come right back. They're like so happy to have received it. So, yeah, we're, we're, doing, we're doing good work out there. Thank <laughs> share you with so much. Yeah, I'll yeah. show you my, um, my DVD. Just, I made a logo and <laughs> you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, we almost. Can see it. Oh, the uh, logo. Yeah. 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 So you know, the bird represents, of course, the the transformation that comes from the practices, and you know, receiving 
receiving both. It's interesting because yoga is to yoke sun and moon and um, qigong is to work with energy. And of course the yin and the yang coming into balance into our bodies, um, yeah. connecting with those energies in the universe. And so receiving, receiving the, the healing energies of the earth and the universe and through our breath and through the practices, it's really, I'm so grateful that I came upon it in my life. I'll tell you, you know, I, I grew up in an area where none of this was being talked about or there was no exposure yeah. to it. So I feel so grateful that I found a Tai Chi class and, and I knew right away, like right when I took the Tai Chi class, I was just like, this is, this is my path. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, we already 25 minutes in, so I wanted to ask, would you like to lead a little bit of breathing session so we can uh, get an experience of what you teach? Sure. Yeah. Do you want to do some of the um, slower pranayama or do you want to do a little bit of the active breath work or both? Uh, something that you feel is easy to convey over a video for a beginner, someone that's never done anything like this before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, let's just do two things. Now, how much time do we have? Just five minutes or? As yeah, long as it takes. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's just start at home and together here on our video. There we go. So if you're sitting, you know, at home, let's just for a moment, Feel our feet on the floor and close our eyes just to ground and center for a moment. Feeling our feet connected to the earth, allowing our shoulders to relax, lifting and elongating the spine, feeling the chest and the heart open. And one way, simple way of doing that is we can lift the shoulders up, draw the shoulders back and relax them down chin parallel to the earth and the crown of our head lifted up towards the sky feeling this channel between earth and sky with our bodies and just taking a moment to breathe into that channel taking a long breath in and a long breath out long breath in long breath out and as we're connecting with our posture and our breath, think about something that you might want to let go of that you're holding on to. So tune into your body and scan your body 360 degrees from head to toe. And just intuitively notice where the energy is feeling a little blocked in your body. It might be a very obvious physical pain, or maybe there's something a little more subtle happening in the body. Noticing what you'd like to release that you're holding on to physically. And then we'll do something from Qigong called tossing off stagnant chi, which is a way of releasing tension that we're holding on to, both physical and mental. So we'll bring fist at our belly, and we're gonna take a deep breath in through the nose as the fists rise up the center of the body. Nice long deep breath in and then we're going to expand our arms out to the sky with a big sigh. <sighs> think about, connect the body to the mind and think about what you're releasing that you're holding on to. Make fists, breathe in, fists rise up. Let the breath fill the torso, breathe out. <sighs> what are you letting go of? Let's do a couple more of those. Breathe it in. Let it go. <sighs> There's something in the mind that you've been holding on to or something emotionally that needs to be released. You can think about something mentally or emotionally. Let it go. Let's actually do one more time. Breathe in. All right, and then we'll do three part yogic breath. So, in, you know, I like to do the hand movements as well with the three part yogic breath. 
So we're going to breathe into, we can all place um, our hands on each part of the body. So we're not just robotically doing it. We're connecting with the breath and where the breath is traveling in the body. First breath to the belly, second breath to the rib cage, third breath to the upper chest. And then we'll release with the sound SHH, long and extended, like shh. And the reason why I have that sound is because the sound lets a longer exhalation out and the longer the breath out, like we were talking about, the more we're inducing the relaxation response. So let's do that. Take a breath in through the nose into the belly. That was perfect timing for a freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I was just relaxing. And I'm like, yeah, she hasn't talked in a while. <laughs> I thought she was guiding this. Oh, uh, well, that's what happens. I, uh, yeah, I noticed I, uh, I, uh, I think she's coming back. Let's see. Okay, good. Yeah, I was like, very relaxed. Okay. okay. Wow. It's very silent. Very silent. Andrew is just like, why not meditate? It's as good a time as any. I mean, we were continuing. So mm -hmm. trying four to six seconds in, six to eight seconds out, trying to keep the exhale longer than the inhale. Uh, <sighs> well, I, and um, I was, uh, I, I definitely I, I definitely hope she comes back because I was going to invite her to put her uh, her links in the comments for this video, which um, I'll uh, I'll just have to do it uh, behind the scenes after we finish. If uh, yeah, yeah, we if, don't have to worry about for it. some reason, but um, uh, but yeah, the um, all the information that uh, that she mentioned about the uh, about about the the uh retreats the dvds the um online videos that's all on the website which is qigonginfuseyoga.com so i'll make sure that that uh that link gets put up in the comments one way or another and coming back then let's uh let's end the interview right here and uh you know, I, I would love to talk to her some more. I want to ask her some more I questions can, about Qigong and yoga, but if she's... Uh, she's, okay. she's still online, so I'm, I'm, still, I'm still hoping. All right, well, in the meantime, 
Uh, Dana, what's your experience with yoga? Um, only, uh, only a little bit formally. I've yoga classes never really <clears throat> been my thing. What I what I always find when uh, when I when I do yoga in like a a, a the, the, the typical group class setting is I, uh, I'm I'm always out of sync. The 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 instructor says hold this pose and I'm ready to to end it and move on. Or the the instructor says okay now move. Uh, or I'm starting to like really get into something. The instructor says okay now move on to this other thing and I'm ready to really sink in. So, um, uh, I. Uh, the just the that that sort of uh, aspect of the format of of group yoga classes has never never really worked for me, um, but but the as far as the the principles of breathing and stretching and uh, opening the joints, alignment, balance are uh, are all really good principles to incorporate into and or along with qigong training along with um with calisthenics and physical exercise along with whatever other form of 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 conditioning or or physical skill training or or movement practice you do so um so it's 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 in that sense it's uh had had an influence on uh on on my my own practices and and <clears throat> the uh and 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 sort of how i how i approach um how how i how i approach physical fitness in yeah. in general and my physical fitness and mind body practices yeah yeah well, I was experienced through yoga through uh, P90X. That was my first uh, big yoga experience, 90 minutes every once a week. And then I took a class at my college, so that was like one quarter. I was okay with it, but not super like, oh, yeah, let's do this for the rest of my life. So I uh, went on for a few years without ever doing it, and then – I started noticing more and more martial arts teachers just incorporating yoga stretches into the warm up, and so I took another look at it, and I think I did like a bought like thirty classes from this school that was close to my place, and then I was going there like once every few days for a few weeks, and that was nice, but still, you know, just not didn't catch me i kept asking about like more deeper breathing but the teachers seemed to be more just like they took their certification class and they they know what they teach they don't really talk about what they don't teach so i was uh, a little disappointed in that they didn't really have a lot of advanced uh education that they would share uh just verbally outside of class so but you know, yoga is interesting. It definitely has a deep practice. And if you listen to people like Sad Guru talk about yoga and talk about the meditation, it's just like far, far beyond everything I've experienced at the local yoga studios. So, yeah, maybe well, one, I mean, one of those guys. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing, one thing about yoga certainly is that it's very popular and, and with a, a great deal of popularity comes a great variety yeah uh, and uh and and a certain amount of what what might be called watering down in terms of the all the mind body elements the practice the, the 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 mind regulation the body regulation as a meditative practice as a devotional practice you know these elements uh kind of get lost similarly to how the martial elements get lost from from tai chi as it becomes more of a, a health practice and that and kind of a parallel there but um yeah. But exactly. yoga, in you know, in its in in the fullness of it, in in the tradition, and in, in the fullness of what it is, it, it um is a uh, is is a complete and comprehensive mind, body, spirit practice, um, and 
uh, and 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 one thing that I I can't uh, I, I can't not mention in in regards to my personal experience also is um, is acro yoga is my pers- my yeah. my favorite form of yoga is acro yoga um, because uh, be- because much like uh, there's there's in qigong there's the solo practices and there's a partner in or in tai chi or, or Qigong, there's a solo practice and, and there's a partner practices in yoga. There's a solo practice, which is what most people think of the yoga, but there's also, there's also partner practices and, and, um, and acro yoga is a lot more fun for me. Like, like being in uh, physical contact and doing, doing things with other people, like, you know, uh, doing things, uh, by, um, by putting the structure of the human body together in interesting ways yeah. um, is, is a lot more fun and, and engaging to me than, um, than, than being led through a series of postures. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same way with, uh, with Tai Chi, you know, like memorizing forms was not my favorite part of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, but, uh, I, I but, so I loved it. <laughs> um, I've learned more. I have forgotten more forms than most people ever learn. <laughs> I can certain of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, some people love it. And those who love it, it's great. But uh, but the, the hands-on uh, sort of exploratory, explorative um, part is 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 what uh, appeals most to me. So um, so by far, acro yoga is my favorite form of yoga for myself cool cool yeah i did a, i did a hot yoga like an 80 degree yoga that was uncomfortable but it wasn't that big a deal then i did 105 degree yoga and i was just like ah these people are crazy this, this is how yoga is done in india though because it's 100 degrees there all the time <laughs> so they're just doing yoga outside in 100 degree weather no big deal so you know, they're trying to bring that hot yoga to the States with heaters or with San Diego with heaters. So not, not my, not, I'm not a fan of it, but looks like we're not going to get Lynn back. So Dane, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks so much. And yeah. um, we'll share Lynn's links and I'd love to hear more about what she is teaching. Um, Actually, she's, she just, is she coming back? me a message i i sent her a message just got back to me i think okay actually she is here okay so we'll at least get to come right. full circle Let's see how this works welcome, just... welcome. there, there we go All okay. right. now... hello there okay i'm back the world of te- technology will throw you off you know but here we are again. <laughs> well, we just taught, we just chatted about yoga and our experience with yoga. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and and something else. Uh, uh, it'll be it'll be great to we'll, we'll say to be continued for for part two. There's a lot of uh, great topics we could talk about, including acro acro yoga, which is my personal favorite kind of yoga. But um, uh, you were, uh, I want to, uh, make sure that, that you put, uh, have a chance to put your links in the comments for this video, um, for people, uh, who come across this, um, at a later time and, um, uh, any, uh, uh, anything else that, uh, you'd like to share or come full circle on before we wrap up? Yeah, I think uh, it would be nice to go back to the three-part yogic breath and maybe finish with on a relaxing note. Okay, sounds good. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <sighs> three breaths in. <clears throat> First breath into the belly and breathing in through the nose on all three breaths in. Breathing into the belly. Breathing in to the rib cage. Breathing in to the upper chest. And release with the sound SHH long and extended. Shh. 
And again, breathing in deeply into the belly, breathing into the rib cage, breathing into the upper chest. Slowly let it go. See if you can make it a little bit longer this time. Let's do it one more time. Breathe into the belly. Breathe in rib cage. Breathe in upper chest. And then again, as a reminder, when you're driving, when you're doing the dishes, when you're in the shower, when you're walking around just feeling stressed, you don't have to do the hand movements with shi shi hu breath, shi shi hu, inhale, inhale, exhale. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe in through the nose. And exhale, H U long and extended. So if you wanna do the hands, we're holding a ball of energy, palms facing each other, breathe in through the nose, expand. Breathe in through the nose, expand. And then exhale as we contract. And just a little tip for anyone who's watching, what's really good for inducing the sleep response and for um, insomnia is say if we're just sleeping, and we can't do the shi shi hu breath with the expansions and contractions with the movement. We can just breathe in, breathe in through the nose again. Hold your breath, five, four, three, two, one, and then let a long, slow breath out. If your mind is racing, racing, wandering, thinking about the day and your relationship and how much you have to do tomorrow and all that stuff. Um, breathe in, breathe in, hold your breath, long breath out and do that again and again before bed and it helps to uh, induce the sleep response. So. Thanks so much. Shake like a tree when you're stressed out. It's physiologically known to lower cortisol levels. You know, you can kind of just get the whole body into it and Bob, wait, there I am. There I am. Emotions, <laughs> yeah, yeah. zombies, and it's you know such a people think oh it's so goofy, but it's one of the best things that you can do for your body. It's so amazing for your lymphatic system. It pumps fluid through your body. It expels waste. It's really good for blood circulation, and one of the most powerful ways of quickly lowering adrenaline and cortisol levels. So it's like, yeah. why not do that, mm -hmm. right? as often as we can think of it so there is a reason shake the body is that the end of the eight brocades form it's the last thing it's the most important thing and you do nine of them not eight <laughs> right 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 uh -huh. the eight brocades yeah, yeah i love that one so i do that almost every day and uh good that's a great qigong so yeah i highly recommend it to everybody Oh, real quick, before we uh, finish up, Lynn, what's your favorite Qigong uh, form and what's your favorite yoga form? Um, well, I love the healing sounds. Oh, yeah. Um, very much. And there's also something called the five treasures, which anyone can find on. I'll just type it on here. I think it's um, the nqa.org, I believe it is. It's the National okay. Qigong Association site if people want to do the five treasures. And, mm -hmm. um, and as far as yoga goes, I just, I love Propalo yoga. Um, I love so many aspects of yoga, but it's hard to really pick one thing. But I actually, I, I could I could say that it's the active awesome. breath work of yoga, like breath yeah. of joy, as soon as the active breath work comes into the practice, I just mm. I have to say that's my favorite part. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All Thanks right. So <clears throat> yeah. So um, I uh, uh, please do share those links in the comments for this video and keep up the good work. In the meantime, we look forward to 
<clears throat> we'll look forward to a uh, continuation at a later time to uh, continue the conversation. And uh, Lynn, thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, guys, and have a good holiday. All right. Thank you, Lynn. You have a good holiday, too. Take care. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>